Well, welcome to the Herb of the Week with me, your host and instructor of the Botanical Medicine Study Course, Stephanie Georgiev. There are all sorts of links in the program notes on how you can be the first on your block to become in the know about all things botanical medicine. We're now in April in the Northern Hemisphere. Spring is in full throng, which means dramatic weather of which North America seems to be going all out to express these days. So sorry and deep caring and empathy go out to all those who are suffering with this amazing destruction at this time. Now, in Chinese medicine, spring is the season of the element of wood, and the organ of the system that is the focus of this season is the liver and gallbladder. The liver is probably one of the most amazing and actually abused organs in our body. It's the largest organ in our system and is involved in every aspect of metabolism. Many, many traditions focus on the liver during spring with various religious practices having some sort of fast in the week leading up to spring. So many of us are familiar also with the concept of spring tonics. So for this month of April, we will be exploring some of nature's most valuable allies for our livers. And this week's one of the natural products industry's best sellers and nature's most amazing wonders, we will be exploring milk thistle, or as botanists like to call it, Silibum marianum. I first came in contact with milk thistle during my first year of naturopathic school. Any health science education from nursing school to naturopathic to medical school, your first year is all about anatomy. For obvious reasons, you need to know where everything is. And since the 17th century in Europe, anatomy class involves dead people, which are formally called cadavers. And everybody can see them, not just certain people. You can, everybody can see cadavers. My first class as an undergraduate, we got to, we, everybody was assigned to a cadaver. We were in groups, <clears throat> which is also true in, in medical and uh, naturopathic school. We got our cadaver to dissect and we were given information on how we could donate our bodies to science when we died, which I thought was a little odd way to begin uh, an anatomy class. But at the risk of hampering science, after my classes in anatomy labs, both as an undergraduate and graduate, I would not suggest anybody does this. It's very irreverent to say the least. <clears throat> in any case, the substance that helps cadavers not disintegrate is formaldehyde, something that really stinks. It penetrates your clothing as, and is incredibly toxic to living people's livers. In naturopathic school, our instructors were more interested in students' livers than they were at, at my uh, undergraduate university in the 1980s. So in addition to requiring goggles, gas masks with filters and wearing clothes that we would immediately take off after lab and wash, we were given packets of ground up milk thistle seeds that we were supposed to put in our tea or eat in our oatmeals or smoothings. Now, during my botanical medicine classes, I learned why. And since then, I am completely in awe of this amazing plant. Like many in these Help Your Liver Be Healthy series, there is no pharmaceutical comparison with milk thistle. The plant is quite beautiful, and the signature that lets you know for sure it's milk thistle are the leaves, and you can see that in this slide. And they have this beautiful milky white web on them. The other thistle, known as common thistle or Circeum vulgare, and the word vulgare means common in botanical language. Uh, this thistle does not have these types of leaves. So when you're walking wherever you walk and you see a thistle plant, look at the leaves. If there's this beautiful milky white web, that is milk thistle. 
This species is an annual or biannual plant in the family of Asteraceae. And this fairly typical thistle has red to purple flowers and a shiny pale green leaf with white veins. The, the, the words veins, I think it looks like a web, but let's call it veins. Originally a native of Southern Europe through Asia, this is found throughout the world. Now, Silibum marianum is native to the Mediterranean region of Europe, including Greece, but mostly Crete. And it goes all the way east to Iran and Afghanistan. It's probably uh, native and it's possibly native near the coast of southeast England. Uh, marianum, uh, Silibum, Silibum marianum has been widely introduced outside its natural range, specifically into North America, Hawaii, Australia, New Zealand, and Colombia. And it's considered an invasive weed, which I find interesting because we get so many toxic psychoactive substances that are illegal from Colombia and they're very hard on our liver. So I think it's interesting. There's a lot of it in Colombia and they think it's invasive. Maybe they think it's in competition with some of their larger uh, illegal cash crops. Additionally, uh, milk thistle also spreads as an invasive plant in almost all of Europe as a consequence of field cultivation. And this is mainly because milk thistle is such a lucrative plant to grow if you want to sell uh, supplements. Something I think is interesting is that milk thistle likes disturbed soils and rock piles Another sign that the plant is gesturing to humans as to how healthy it is for us with disturbed livers. But I digress. Milk thistle, as I said before, is part of the Asteraceae family, which means those beautiful purple flower heads are actually a bunch of little flowers, which means each flower has a fruit, which we think of as a seed. And that's where the magic happens. With all those flowers coupled with a deep taproot common to the Asteraceae family, this means the plant is very much focused on the sun and collects in the head and brings the sunlight all the way down into the soil. And obviously, it's concentrated in those beautiful seeds, which energetically, I think, helps our bodies. Now, there are six herbal actions I'm sorry, there are five herbal actions. I'm counting the title, which is not an herbal action. But anyways, there are five herbal actions. One is hepatic, which means it's healing to the liver. The other is galactagog, which sounds like something from the Star Wars trilogy, but it's actually means it helps increase uh, milk in uh, women who are breastfeeding. It's demulcent, which means it's very soothing. It's sort of like hand cream for your mucous membranes. It's a cholagog, which means that helps the, the, oh, cholagog. Okay, Stephanie, I can't remember all my Latin here. Um, it helps the cholagog. It helps the gallbladder. There you go. Ding, 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 ding. It helps the gallbladder, uh, which means uh, cola is, is the Latin for gallbladder. And it helps the gallbladder increase its bile production, which helps all kinds of things for the digestion, et cetera. And the most amazing aspect of this herb, the most amazing herbal action is the anti-hepatotoxic when anything with hepa in it is a liver in uh, medicinal latin and what this does is it helps prevent the liver from being exposed to toxic substances now historically milk thistle was used as a liver tonic but mainly because we humans are always trying to figure out how to live toxic lifestyles and get away with it. There's been quite a bit of research on this herb 
and many studies to support its liver protecting qualities. Essentially what milk thistle does is it puts a protective coating around liver cells so that toxic pollution does not penetrate and destroy the liver. And it also does this with just toxic chemicals in general. All sorts of terrible experiments have done, been done to rats to demonstrate this action. And in the spirit of stopping such experiments, let's just say milk thistle is effective and go on from there. What's also interesting is as the name implies, milk thistle, which used to go by the name of Metiarchia, and that was how I learned it. Uh, it shows you how old I am. Uh, milk thistle promotes milk secretion in lactating mothers, hence the name milk thistle. I'm not sure if mothers way back in ancient times who did not have a mil enough milk to give their babies saw the leaves and thought, hey, what would happen if I ate the seeds of this plant that has a milky looking leaf? But here we are. Now, this wonderful slide I found on PubMed, and they are the main constituents of milk thistle. And I know upon casual glance, these things kind of look similar, um, but apparently they're different. Um, and, uh, you know, and these chemicals, these are the ones that help you, your liver be so helped by this amazing herb. Now on this slide, there is a more complete uh, examples of different constituents of milk thistle. These are excellent scrabble words and phrases to impress people at cocktail parties. Not only will you seem quite intelligent if you take milk thistle before partaking some sort of alcohol, your liver will be protected from the damaging aspects of alcohol. Now, obviously, I'm not saying you can drink gallons of hard liquor and not have any adverse side effects if you drink a cup of milk thistle tea before, but a few drinks, the, the, the herb will be able to handle it. The amazing thing about milk thistle is it protects the liver from both pollution and adverse effects of drugs. Many people do not know things like acetaminophen uh, and naproxen and many psychotropic medications, which are things you take for things like anxiety and depression, which it seems like everybody's taking these days. Um, they uh, have are harmful to the liver but milk thistle protects the liver and does not seem to have any side effects or drug interactions, meaning it doesn't seem to potentiate drugs. But as always, ask your pharmacist, physician, or qualified herbalist about certain drugs and taking milk thistle at the same time. Milk thistle also helps to restore the liver. So if you've been exposed to something awful, this is part of your healing regimen. Personally, I find the taste of milk thistle to be a bit icky. I think it's very bitter, but I don't like coffee. So you coffee drinkers may enjoy the extreme taste of milk thistle in teas. You need to boil the seeds for at least five minutes to get any sort of effect. I personally think taking powdered extract in pills or gel caps with liquid extract help you get the dose you need. Tinctures are also a good way to take this amazing herb. I would recommend glycerin tinctures or, or vinegar tinctures. It seems counterproductive to take an alcohol-based tincture, but that's just me. Or you can simply grind up the seeds in your coffee grinder into a powder and add to smoothies or cereals. I do not think young children would enjoy the taste, however. A single plant of milk thistle can produce up to 6,000 seeds. It is considered an invasive weeds with many districts all over the world trying to eradicate it, which I think is counterintuitive to spray this plant with a liver toxic herbicide, but that's just me. If you want to grow it in your garden, you will have lots of it and each plant will grow up to nine years. 
uh, every gardening manual I looked at said, maybe you might not want to do this. And you also may have a lot of visitors in your garden. So you may not have to try to grow it. Um, but I think it's interesting how invasive this plant is considering how polluted our world is. But obviously this knowledge that the plant may be gesturing that you, we need help and here's help, um, this escapes the thinking of certain governmental agency personnel managers that are being lobbied by petrochemical companies, but I digress. So however you want to take this amazing plant in tea, tincture, capsule, or eating the seeds, it's a good idea to include it in your spring detox programs. And if you have a job where you're exposed to lots of toxic chemicals, say people working in nail salons or working with things like paint and so on, I highly encourage you to explore this plant, this amazing gift from nature. So this is Stephanie Georgeff saying thank you so much for spending your valuable time with me. If you would like a free introductory lesson for the Botanical Medicine Study course, send me an email to the link below. Sorry, I'm of the internet immigrant age group and hope to get a lot, bit more technical as the weeks go forward. Until that time, we have to do it the old fashioned way where you send me an email and I reply in person. It's not a bot, it's really me. I will send you a link for a free introductory lesson and a form you can fill out to help me tailor the course to your liking. Until next time, be well.